first thing to do is establish the design. Rule of thumb, posteriors, height of contour design on the anteriors, cingulum rest, again height of contour. Horseshoe design, we can, we can make a, a shorter horseshoe here just based on the ridge depth here. We have a nice healthy ridge so that's going to help support the saddle better. So we're going to have less movement. Now the pencil line that I'm making, that's where you want it to finish at the end. Your wax up is going to be a little more extended. These areas here, you're going to go a little higher here, just for finishing room. Now if you notice, look at the margin here and look at the margin here. Okay, so this is going to allow me to incorporate more tooth with my clasping so I could be more in harmony with the abutment there. I'm putting a line right at the height of contour on my undercut, my tissue undercut. Very important. The one thing that you don't want to do is pass the undercut with the material. This is going to be very, very uh, painful and the amount of adjustment is going to be endless just because the buckle fold was incorporated in the, uh, in the plastic. So you don't want to do that. Okay, we're going to put a high finger clasp on the smaller. We're not concerned with aesthetics here. We're trying to avoid any tissue involvement and even our path of insertion is going to be compromised if we, if we go into the tissue area. So just trying to simplify things. Now, we have to implement a palatal seal. Okay, let's look at the design one more time. If you're wondering why I didn't incorporate a design back here, it's totally unnecessary. I, I think the best approach when it comes to designs is less is more. The most challenging part of this particular design is the angulation of the first molar here. Just because if we don't incorporate a high clasp here and we incorporate a standard clasp, the amount of block out to, to fill the uh, undercut here would be so enormous that having it finished, there's gonna be an enormous amount of material just to make up the space of the block out. So we'll end up having a clasp that's probably double the thickness just because we had to compensate for the, uh, the block out. And it's totally unnecessary when we can just go high on the molar right at the height of contour. This extension is something to take seriously. Making a very short horseshoe would, would be ill-advised. You don't want movement in these uh, free end saddles. You, you, you need to have these as secure as possible because any lateral movement is going to cause a lot of uh, discomfort. So this is why a horseshoe of, of this length would be adequate for this particular design. In general, we don't make 100% parallel blockouts for flexibles. Otherwise, it'll work against us aesthetically and functionally. So, what we want to do is a blockout that allows the partial to still have the uh, adequate amount of retention and still be within the, the realm of the aesthetic design that we have on the model currently. Okay, so what we need to do is focus where the impingements are going to be. So let's go with this one first. If I needed to gauge the parallel portion of this undercut, this is where we're at. See this area here is beginning to get resorption, so we're going to take some of the pressure off that area, the block out, so we don't expedite the resorption. Now, on this particular tooth, we also have a decent amount of undercut, but I'm not going to block this out 100%. I'm going to give it some angulation because I do want to have some catch for my retention. So, I'm just going to block it out very, very slight. Also, we have a pretty defined margin, so I'm going to take some of the, uh, the sharpness out of that. Now, this is a very, very important area here, okay? We don't have any abutments to anchor to, 
if we block this out completely what we're going to have is this this saddle area here is going to have a lot of play in 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 in, in the patient's mouth and that's a no-no so me personally i rather leave it alone but if you want to block it out block it out with still an angle of undercut you notice i'm taking away from the lower portion of the block out just so I can create the angle of undercut that I need. I don't put any tissue undercut because right at the height of contour usually is very comfortable. If we were going below that and there was you know a degree of undercut then I would block it out but personally in my experience being right at the height of contour has been very uh, successful in terms of patient comfort. Again I'm going to put a small degree of wax here just to protect that margin. We do have undercut here. It's somewhat significant. And I'd like to block this out so when I do my setup on the duplicate, it's established and I can cut the tooth accordingly to fit in that slot. I'm just gonna fill a little bit here. By the time the partial is delivered, that socket is gonna be somewhat healed. You can put a, a small degree of wax here. I personally don't do it. I usually handle these areas here in my finishing. I'll take some of the sharp edges away and it's usually enough. There is a danger of putting too much block out in these areas and then what would happen as a result of that when the, uh, the appliance is made there may be some space between the plastic and the uh, linguals of the teeth and that, that could be a little headache at the end. So. Just to avoid that possibility, I usually leave these areas alone and then just tend to it at the finish. This is pretty much it. All right, let's take a look at it, what was done. And I guarantee you that I didn't sacrifice any retention. It's gonna take a little work to get it in, but again, you'd rather have some control uh, from the beginning as opposed to not having it and having issues with looseness pretty much it.